studied the book of Hebrews, it's an awesome book to study. Do, do yourself a favor and just read through that book. This is an introduction to, to that God, who at sundry, sundry times and diverse manners, and what's it, what's it for talking to you? King James Version. Spake in time past unto fathers by prophets. So, Mark of Vertaling said, in, in, the old, uh, in the old covenant, in the old times, God spoke to the people through prophets. And in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Worlds. So God, in the old covenant, spoke to us, spoke to the people through prophets. And now in the new covenant, he's, he speaks to us through his Son. Now there are denominations that completely take prophecy and Throw it out of the church saying that God no longer speaks to people or to his church through prophets. Which is not accurate. Mm. Because there is the gift of prophecy. Yeah. Yeah. Now, whenever you read a, a chapter in the Bible, it's important to understand that there's a context. Mm. There's an author. There is, um, of whom the author of Hebrews is un unknown. Some say it was Paul, but there isn't a lot of uh, evidence through the that we can say this specific person is definitely the author. Like we know Paul wrote Romans, but nobody's got an accurate idea who wrote Hebrews. Even though the writing style um, lines up with a lot of things that he said. But there's a crowd, on the audit, I'm going to say crowd. crowd. So if I just share something to you, um, and we, we had to go back 200 years in time, and I just share something on traveling with you, and this is 200 years back, it took you three weeks to come here. Yeah, let it now spread out. Put it back. Alright? And and I write something, just take just take traveling, just take cars two hundred years back. Think two hundred years back. Just take traveling. And we had to write something about that now. And I need to take that document and today, in the year 2019, read that chapter to you. How many of you believe that things have changed? Yeah. 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 Ken has got his own wheels today. <laughs> Almost the awesome Ken. Ken has got his own wheels today. But back then, so there's, there's things that was written, and if you understand the, the context of the book of Hebrews, the entire context, if I have to sum it up in what my understanding is, it is about the high priest and the lamb, the high priest that became the lamb, laid down his life, and has taken us out of the old covenant and has established us in the, in the new covenant. All right. Now, in the context of this, just one simple line that how I interpret Hebrews, there's a lot more info in the book of Hebrews um, than just the, the sim simple line that I've shared with you now. But it's, it's basically about the high priest and the lamb and blood sacrifice in the old covenant and that there's no need for black, blood sacrifices in the new covenant because his blood was sufficient. Amen. Yes, amen. So the introduction is on this book is, in the Old Testament... He spoke to us through prophets. What? What about? So what, if we take, what was the main theme of the Old Testament? Think about it quickly. What was the main theme of the Old Testament? Think. What was it pointing to? 
the coming of the Messiah, Jesus. It was pointed to Jesus. Now Jesus came. And when the author of, this book, uh, of Hebrews wrote the book of Hebrews, he didn't write it before the cross. He wrote it after the cross. And now these days, we don't, have, we don't listen to prophets pointing us to Jesus. We have actually seen him. Yeah. 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 We've walked with him. We've encountered him. Yeah. We've seen the miracles he's done. God gave a face. To himself in Jesus. Mm. We can actually now identify with God in a person, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Alright. So we can't take one verse of scripture and say God's no longer talking to the church through prophets and that the, the gift of prophecy is no longer uh, a valid gift. It is an awesome gift in the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. And what I want to do this morning, I want to talk to you that um, because sometimes just going back on basic principles in your walk with God Will, um, will establish you in, in, in your future when it comes to hearing God's voice. Uh, in the week, b- both me and Tashai spoke about, she actually mentioned uh, 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 people that my fa- family members of ours know. They know these people. They, they know about them. And this woman left her husband and she ran off with a pastor. All right. Mm-hmm. So, um, it's a good choice. Yeah. The pastor, yeah. <laughs> but she, she ran off with a pastor. And she said that God told her to write off her children. Yeah. They are kinders of Now, I want to ask you. No. 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 Was that God? No. Okay. But she said it was God. No. All right. How would she make a statement like that? She made a statement most probably because the pastor... Mm. wanted the wife and not the children and he said hear the word of the Lord (laughs) thou should get rid of these things they will interfere with also Freya (laughs) just get rid of them so we know we know it wasn't God amen we know it wasn't God but how do I know it's God talking to me because and I want to to talk to you this morning and, and from out of a place of even making mistakes myself not, I believe God spoke to me, I believe it was the word of the Lord, but afterwards he realized, that was second in the year, but he said, I don't know. You know, we always pull God into things. Yeah. You want a new car? We tell your wife, the Lord spoke to me. Yeah. God spoke to me about this new car. And then, so often the car breaks down, and then where's God in the picture? Yeah. God wanted to take you back to biblical times. Jesus walked everywhere he wanted to be, so you, it's good for your health. But you know the problem in the body of Jesus Christ is that there's so many people saying this is God speaking. This thus say the Lord. Mm. Yeah. It reminded me of a guy that once prophesied in church. He actually, and it actually really happened. He said there was tongues, and then he gave an interpretation to the tongues. He said, Hear the word of the Lord. As Noah led my people out of Egypt land, his wife punched him and said it was Moses. <laughs> Would God make a mistake like that? The guy said, correction saith the Lord, as Moses led my people out of Egypt land. <laughs> this really happened. Needless to say, I think the service was done and does it. Yeah. But it's easy to say, thus saith the Lord. You know what's beautiful about God? Is that God is willing to speak through us. Yeah. Two people, even knowing that we can make mistakes in sharing yeah, yeah. this word. Yeah. I, I did a funeral in Palabora many years back. And um, at the, the event afterwards, there was a, a, a mother and her daughter that looked at me funny. They looked at me, but I could see in their eyes they wanted to say something to me. <laughs> yeah, have you seen that before? Mm-hmm. You look at people, you go, hello, yellow, and you can see they, they're actually saying something to you, just looking at you. <laughs> So I, I went out of my way, started talking to them, and the, and the mother said, I will never come to your church. I said, why? You've never been there. Why would you not come? And she said, you're a bunch of false prophets. Oh. And, I, and I said, but, but based on what are you saying this? Based on what are you saying that we false prophets? She said, that one of the guys in your church who works with my daughter prophesied to her, and he said to her that she's got an affair with the guy she's working with. And she hasn't, she hasn't got an affair with the guy she's working with. So obviously you guys don't hear God's voice. Mm. Now I remember this young guy that gave her the word. He, was, he came to the Lord months before that. On fire for Jesus. You know those are the ones you need to tame. Yeah, yeah the one that just come to the Lord. Yeah. 
Yeah. They so eager, they want to operate in all the gifts. Yeah. yeah. They're still babies, but they want to be apostles. Yeah, come on. Yeah. yeah. So that's a difficult time to, to control these young horses. So I, I God gave me a word of wisdom in that moment, and I took my attention off this angry mother, and I looked at the daughter, I said to her, do you have an affair with this guy? She said, no, I don't. And I said to her, okay, I want to ask you a, another question. Is this guy flirting with you? Oh, yes. Mm. He's flirting with me. Yeah. I said, okay, is there a possibility that this young guy only recently came to the Lord? Is there a possibility that he might have picked up something that God wants to warn you from getting involved in something that will destroy you? Mm. Yeah, it's most probably. Is it? So this is what happened to him. Because the gift of prophecy will work through his life and because he's still immature, yeah. he just saw a red light. And instead of saying to you, I sense something that's going to happen that can cause damage in your life, in your, in, your, in your relationship with your family and in his relationship with his family, this is what I believe God is saying. He could have actually won her, but instead of not understanding, he just went up and said, this is what God is saying, you are having an affair, and, he, and she didn't have an affair with him. But there was something about to happen. Mm, yeah. So a lot of times, we, we pick up things in the spiritual realm, and we share something with people, and it's always important when you operate in the gift of prophecy that you make sure that it's God speaking through you. Yeah. I mean, and if you're not sure, let me give you a key how to handle this. When you share a word with somebody, share the following. Say, I am not sure if this is God saying this. Yeah. But this is the things that I see ha that's happening in my spiritual eye. What do you believe is interpretation of this? Mm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. because in the week, I, I, I believe the Holy Spirit said to me that a lot of people outside the church never gave up believing in God. They just stop believing in the church yeah. Yeah. because of mismanagement of gifts, yeah. stupidity, yeah. just by simple stupidity. Many years back, a woman whose life fell apart went to a church service and she said, God, if you exist, I want you to talk to me this morning. And she went to a specific church for the first time in her life. When she walked into the church, she sat down. An old lady wrote a letter to her. And pass it through the aisles. And when she opened it up and she, she read this, she said, Next time when you come to our church, please make sure you cover your head. Yes. Mm. She left the church building. She never came back. Yeah. Mm. Mismanagement. Yeah. So, one of the most dangerous things to Christianity is the church of today. Um, yeah. <laughs> come on. Yeah. Let's just be honest. Yeah. The church today is a dangerous place. So should we withdraw from the church so that we can be safe? Mm -hmm. I don't believe we should. I, I, you know what I believe is if you, if you are injured in church is that you need to solve that problem. Yeah. Sort out that relationship and work through it so that the body of Jesus Christ can stay together. Mm. It's, this fellowship is important to the body of Jesus. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So in the context of the New Testament, in the context of grace, <coughs> how does God speak to us. Now, because if we take the Bible in itself and we say the Bible is the Word of God, then, we can, then, then confusion can, can find a platform in your life simply because I can say God's Word, I can quote the Old Testament uh, Word that was written how many years back? Two and a half thousand years back. And I can quote it to you in the context of now, which is not absolutely what I should do, but it's still in the Bible and then you believe it's God's Word. So how do you know it's God's word? Now let's just run through a couple of things. One, God has always got your best interest at heart. Okay? So God's got your best interest at heart. Secondly, God is all-knowing. So that's a beautiful thing about God. Is God already knew I would make the mistake before I even knew there was a mistake. Yeah, That's how beautiful God is. So God knows exactly what I will decide that God doesn't manipulate my decision. God doesn't make my decision on my behalf. He doesn't decide for me. I do the deciding. Mm. But He knows exactly what I'm going to decide. Is that beautiful about God? Yeah, I mean, so God is in a place where the only influence God has got in your life is the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to you and then 
either working through a person or working, speaking to you through the Bible, speaking to you through nature. God's got different ways of speaking to you. I'm not going to talk about that now. But the only, con the only influence God wants is just to give you information that will help you. And then you live it out. Amen? Amen. God doesn't pre-program us. At night when you sleep. God doesn't take out the memory stick, format it, put it back with new information, and you get up like a robo, cop and bidi bidi bidi, and you just do your thing as a perfect Christian. But God has got the right to influence us. So is there other voices that has got access to our lives. I mean, almost say self. Self is one of the most powerful voices active in our lives. Self. And self always manifests from the first platform, selfishness. So selfishness is all, what I want for myself. I will easily form a word out of self and say God is saying this so that I can just benefit myself. Amen. Yes. Now, one thing about God is God's always got someone else's interest in, in his heart as well. Yeah, yeah. So God, when he gives me information concerning a person, God will always want me to be second and that person first. Yeah. All right. On the way, Nikki. Yes. Quick information. It's not so that we as individuals should benefit from others, but that we can be a blessing to others. Amen. Amen. I am throwing a lot of info quickly to you. I'm actually doing a seven-week teaching in one service quickly. Are you fine with that? Mm, yes. All right. So one of the first things I said to the Lord as an early uh, minister, entering youth ministry, I, want, I sat down with the Lord and I said, Father, I want you to speak to me through Holy Spirit's voice. And then you are more than welcome to use prophets to confirm that word to me. But I'm asking you a personal favor. I don't want second-hand information. I don't want you to take the story to someone else and then come to me and give it to me. Unless I, I can't hear you or what, then you find to talk through a prophet with me. But I'm asking you, always speak to me. So I remember in a, one of, a, a, I think it's my second or third year, as a youth minister, we traveled through South Africa. There was, a, there was a prophet that was about to minister in a church in Cape Town. And our group, the worship team, was, was asked to do the praise and worship at the <coughs> conference in this church. And this guy had a well-known uh, name in South Africa as a prophet. And then a guy from one of these luxury liner buses met me and he said to me, Are you guys are going back? with your team to Johannesburg. So I am driving up with a with a city to city, uh, one of those nice things. He said, I'm driving up with, I can't know what's a bus in army, but it's a nice bus. He said, I'm driving up with this bus and it's empty. If you want, you can throw all your team in and they can have a first class tour back to, to Gauteng. And I begged the team, please jump on the bus because we had a bus that can hardly do 80 with the wind behind it. <laughs> So I thought, if I can load some of these girls, especially, into this bus, and, and guys, and we can just lighten the load, then it's easier for us to drive back with this bus, just the worship team, and the rest of the group can just go. And they didn't want to go because they wanted to hear what the prophet has got to say. Everybody chose our bus, an uncomfortable, no air conditioning Horrible bus. Because they wanted to know what the prophet has got to say concerning next year in their lives. And I remember, no, that was, that was in our first year. Yeah. yeah, that was in our first year. That's why I remember it now. I remember being in a town before we went there. After I spoke to this guy, the Lord said to me, Donnie, I'm going to use you in, under the youth of South Africa for a season in your life. I remember that word clearly. The next week, we went to the city, a big town in Cape Town, where we had a minister at this church, and as a worship team. I played, I took the bass guitar, I played the bass guitar, and the first guy I saw this guy in my life, the first time I ever saw this guy in my life, this guy with a prophetic gift, he came walking up on the stage, he didn't know me, I could have been a, a 
worship leader of the church, or just a bass guitarist. I didn't even lead the worship leader. He walked up on the stage and he looked at me and he walked straight to me and he said to me, this is what God is saying. And he prophesied a couple of things, these, these key things that I always nitpick out of prophecy that I know God has always confirmed a specific line of things in my life. He gave those lines accurately. He said to me, and this is what God is saying, for the next season of your life is going to use you mightily under the youth of South Africa. The glory of the Lord hit me, I fell to the ground. Boom. With my bass guitar. And then he started ministering. And he made appointments with people to sit down with him and hear what God has got to say concerning their life. And he messed up many people's lives. Honestly. He so messed up people's lives in that church that the leadership had to bring other people in to try and recover and restore what was messed up because of sitting in front of a guy and forcing him to give you a word. That's dangerous. Please don't ever do that. 